not satisfied with it, so I'm still working on doing some more. Yes. And now we have another exclusive interview with a very, very prominent writer. Very inspiring. Very interesting. X Miles had a chit chat with Mr. Modu Sabali, who is a very interesting writer, and listen to what he had to say. What he shared with us on Fila. Don't go away. It's your favorite TV show, Fila. Welcome to another edition of Kanla. As you know, this, this segment of, of the Fila show basically just seeks to bring out the profiles of individuals, you know, who are high standing in society, people who have achieved something, you know, in their lives and are still going for more. And in this segment here, we have a person that is, I don't know how to describe him because he's into a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? But uh, we have him right here. He'll basically just break it all down for us. His name is Momo de Sabali. Uh, Mr. Sabali, welcome to Kanla. Thank you, and uh, Manla Momo de Sabali. <laughs> right. Born in Banjul, mm -hmm. grew up in Lamin, Kumba North. Mm -hmm. Went to school in St. Peter's and Gambia High Schools. Mm -hmm. 94, finished A-levels, out of school, no work, no university, I was playing football. And then the university extension program came in. Mm -hmm. First time in the Gambia, to go or not to go. For some reason, I decided to go. W when was this? This was 94? The or? university started November 95. 95. And I joined and it has made all the difference in my Man, life. Man, I was, I was in middle school back then. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you are the feeler generation. So I didn't expect you to be older than that. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, that's, that's like a brief uh, synopsis of your educational career. Absolutely. Uh, is that where you stop? No, I finished 1999, first badge, right. and uh, took up a job. Then I was working at the Department of Youth, youth and Sports also. Right. And then I Whilst started, you were going to the university. I was going to the school, I was going right. to doing some youth work. And right. then I graduated February 1999. Mm -hmm. September 99, I started work at the Central Bank as mm -hmm. a research economist. Mm -hmm. Did five years there. Sixth year, 2005, I left for the United States mm -hmm. to do a master's in economics at Georgia State University. Wow. And then came back 2008, went back to the bank, worked again another year, mm -hmm. and then in late 19, what, 2009, mm -hmm. early 2010, I joined the Ministry of Finance as a director of budget. And that's where I still work. Well, that's, that's pretty rich if you ask me. Well, that's, that's on the educational side. We'll, we'll, we'll eventually get back to that again because I would want uh, a couple of things in detail. Uh, but coming over to your personal life, you said you were born in Banjo. Uh, you care to tell us how long ago this was? Or? Uh, about your age, <laughs> about your age plus 10, 12 years. Well, mid seventies, to be precise. Mid seventies. Mid seventies. Well, that shouldn't be ten, twelve years plus my age. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm <laughs> underestimating your age. <laughs> plus or minus. Right, right. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I lived in Bangladesh for some six years right. after the 1981 coup. We left for Lamin. Okay. I guess the coup was a bit too tough for us. <laughs> we decided to get away from the capital. <laughs> Had to go to the suburbs. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, uh, so we can correctly uh, say you grew up in Lamin. I mean, yeah. Right, and then that's, that's where, where you went to school, for primary school, and then Nursery, you moved on to Gambia high school. school. Gambia High School. And then Gambia High for A-Level. So, so what, was life, what was life like for you growing up? Growing up, it was very interesting, you know, mm -hmm. of course you were born in a poor family, you mm -hmm. know, but uh, you were happy mm -hmm. to get all these mangoes around <laughs> after, after lunch and, you know. <laughs> yeah, coming from Banjul oh, and going to Lemon, that, that, that should have been a, yeah, we a pleasant taking, delight. We are taking, you know, mango in the table rot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the real Lamin boys would not touch them, we will scramble after them, you know. <laughs> and a little bit of wrestling, and I was not good at it because, because coming from Banjo, so mm. Darren and my dad and everybody, but I, I thought of later. Right. And then, of course, football would be there, you know. Yeah, I heard somebody say that. that. Somebody said you were a good, very good soccer player. Yeah, it was Sana. Right. Sana. Sana Saria, we grew up together in Lamin. We had this team called United Stars. Mm. It was a three tire team. Mm -hmm. All the boys in the neighborhood, we had Team A. Mm -hmm. My elder brother was Kodoy. in that category, Kodoy, mm -hmm. then Manai was in Team B, mm -hmm. and Sana was in Team C, but he was mm -hmm. so good, we were also taking him on board in Team, team B, B, you know. Right. But then, then they um, danced and why should so dance be in a way he stays at Team C, <laughs> from team B. so we had this wonderful structure right. that really made life fun growing mm -hmm. up in Lamin. Yeah, that, that, must, that must have been pretty interesting. It was, it sure was. So, so, so how was it like, the, the social life? Because you had the football and the dances, yeah. and I bet there were the girls in it as well. 
they are always there, you know. Yeah, they have uh, to be in the equation yeah, they are somehow. Always there, but uh, I don't think I was that much into them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you wouldn't let on, you know, but you know. But they are always basically, there. we just we just try, trying to know who the man is, the man behind the man, you Absolutely. know, like Absolutely. the man behind the the facade that people see, Absolutely. you know. Uh, so. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> Sachin and Mango, you well. know, he also did some little stealing of uh, corn, maize, mm. you know, boha, mm. and then growing up in Gambia. The worst of it was, you know, go to a nar shop, mm -hmm. you know, a group of you say the Jaima attire, mm. and attire being at a gives it to you, and mm. pass because it's a gun out, mm. and that guy runs away with it. <laughs> Kids, so. don't try this. <laughs> don't. We live in different times now. You know, this was then. Yeah, this in was the right. 80s, this I guess, right? Then, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So you had to balance all the, all the interesting social activities mm -hmm. with education. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, how were you able to do that? Um, for some reason, I, I because I heard you were a very brilliant student. I did I did a little bit of research, you know. What I'm saying? So they told me he was always there on point. So I how was, were you able to balance that? I was uh, predisposed to learning. I right. happened to be smart. I don't know how I got that. <laughs> and then you know, I went to school, worked hard. Right. I think there was a little bit of luck also. I mm. mean, I'm not saying all my progress is based on right, luck, right, right. But that I mean, coming from a family where nobody had ever been to high school. Wow. And I'm the last born of my parents. Right. I went to Lamin School, but mm. in grade four, we had this wonderful headmaster, John P. Bojang. Mm. He's now the head of the National Council for Civic Education. He just right. picks me up from grade four, takes me to grade six. Wow. I didn't do grade five, you know, and I was like, okay, in that school, if you fail, mm. normally they can kick you out. But wow. I sat the common entrance, then this is not your grade six leaving exam, you know, common entrance, it was more serious. You know, so they married and they're empty sitting, you know, them being a I remember you those know, all times. All of those things, you know. Right. And, and I was, and I passed. Right. Went to high school mm -hmm. and then, yalla dimbale mama, try to finish. Mm. And, there, and there was a big difference between high school and secondary school back then. Yeah, yeah. Because so pass with them at them secondary schools, so pass with them high schools. You know, so you made it straight to a high school. I made it, and it's not very common then in my society. Mm. I mean, there, you know, it mm. was so bad. I'm not time when they, you choose high school, but mm. high school guide them, but right. that's it. Right. So well, most of my peers mm. and the community, they were going to secondary school, Brickhammer Junior Secondary, mm. then Alpha Khan. Mm. So there was this friend of mine who wanted to choose a school. He mm. wanted to choose a high school. Mm. And you know, and the grandma said, no, 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 you have to choose Brickhammer Secondary because for mm. like, I mean, you know, so mm. it, it, it was this. Uh, so became I, a sort of a norm. Absolutely. So mm. I went to high school and most of my friends were still going to secondary school. And at times it was a distraction because mm. I needed to put up more work than of they course. did. And, uh, of course. But, you know, I tried to stay in school. So my wife school, Del Ward St. Peter's, and then so I studied to finger play basketball, play mm. a little bit of football. You know, but sometimes the vigil so my time is are you. I know. But then at least you are in that school environment. Mm. And then mm -hmm. uh, by the grace of God, get there from five sit that exam so in 94 mm -hmm. that's when you finish o or a levels i finished o levels in 1992 right and yes. a levels in 94. a levels in 1994 yeah so between 94 and 95 you weren't particularly doing anything yeah i said i finished a levels right i could not get a job right there was no university of the gambia mm -hmm. in the gambia right and i didn't want to go to some of these african universities you mm -hmm. know and of course my parents mm -hmm. could not pay for me to go to the west i'm at that mm -hmm. age adolescent you know yeah. you kind of crazy you know i was dreaming of going to the west mm -hmm. i didn't know how mm -hmm. but in the meantime i was reading newspapers observer was here mm -hmm. old papers mm -hmm. listening to bbc mm -hmm. single playing football mm -hmm. and that was it until this new university thing. so so how did you get admitted into the university i was studying? playing football wearing baba gale one evening <laughs> i played football like some a boy yogi from uh, canifing right you know, take a bag there in the behind the beside the abuko nature is up mm. that play yeah. you know he came in boy there's a university coming up uh, you should enroll he's like ah, boy university gambia <laughs> at first you didn't put faith into it. no i, I didn't i didn't right at first, you know right. but then you know all my friends came in and then i thought about it mm. there was no alternative right you know if you don't uh, have what you like mm. you like what you have what you have for so real <laughs> i just faced it right and then went in to borrow your face Mm -hmm. Face it, face the reality, <laughs> and then you go on. Face it, yeah, that's right. What I did. So that was from '95. Yeah, '95. And then you spent like four years there. Yeah, four years. What, what was it like being a pioneer student? You know, knowing that you guys were the first batch of university students in the Gambia, and you know, 
there was like a 